Hello, welcome to Counterculture TV episode 2. I'm going to try now and reminisce and talk about how, how I got interested in, in the Beat Generation, which, which happened in America, and uh, the early part of it. And uh, I, I was a young uh, drama school student working in a coffee shop uh, in the evening when On the Road came out and I was a weekend be beatnik. I wore my t-shirt and a beret and uh, wore jeans and so that was the symbol of the Beat Generation at that time. But I, and, and I later found out that I have one thing in common with Jack Kerouac amongst many others. Um, both our fathers died exactly on the same day, the 3rd of May 1946. Leo Kerouac died in, in America, in Massachusetts I think, and uh, or could have been he was living in New York at the time, I'm, I'm not too sure. And my father who lived in and uh, died in Johannesburg on that same day. That's just a little coincidence of something, not that it means anything. And uh, but I, I got mainly interested in the Beat Generation uh, when in 1965 the Beat Poetry Incarnation at the Royal Albert Hall, where 7,500 of us came uh, to hear the Beat Poets and to listen to Allen Ginsberg and uh, Michael Horowitz and uh, Alexandra Trocchi and Harry Feinlight. And it was a wonderful evening, and I was struck by the amazing uh, poetry of Allen Ginsberg with his uh, long hair and his beard. And um, I, I, I took a nice interest in, at it, in him then, and in 1967 he came over for the, uh, uh, to be at the Roundhouse for the Congress on the Dialectics of Liberation. I saw him there and I heard him. And he was also at the Legalised Pot Rally in Hyde Park in 1967, where I was as well. And uh, he, he was a symbol of, uh, of freedom. He'd been to Czechoslovakia. Uh, he, he, he was one of the hippies from another generation whom the hippies respected and trusted. And uh, later on in 19... 79, I saw him at a Buddhist uh, uh, charity event at the Roundhouse with Peter Orlovsky and I picked up a few books there and I was so struck I read all the books on Neil Cassidy, reread all the books on the Beat Generation and wrote in my magazine Homegrown a uh, three-part Beat Generation of the early Beats called uh, uh, just one was uh, and said it was written by an angel-headed hipster. And my interest was, I just, and later, in 1983, uh, someone brought Caroline Cassidy, Neil Cassidy's uh, uh, widow, over to meet me in the Portobello Road. Of course, in 1968, I also interviewed and wrote a story about Michael McClure, the San Francisco poet, called Meat Sculptor, which appeared in the underground press in IT. Well, Jay Landisman brought, to take you back, Caroline Cassidy uh, to meet me in the Portobello Road. And there began a, a friendship which was quite long. She was living in England at the time. And uh, she met my wife and my family and came up to my home. And uh, we went to many different places in London together. And she, it was a stage just before she was going to publish her book called Off the Road. But the, the Beat Generation, you've got to read the books and, uh, uh, and the poetry. And it's, it's, uh, the, the original Beats were the inspiration for a lot of the things I'm doing. So my, the culmination of my Beat Generation, I suppose, experience was 30 years after... Uh, the poetry incarnation at the Albert Hall, I had the pleasure through circumstances to bring uh, Allen Ginsberg 
to make a trip list to a rave club to do his last live performance in London there and he'd come over to read poetry at the Royal Albert Hall and for the Penguin Modern Classics and uh, that was quite an honour. I introduced him on the stage and uh, at the, the performance is now on DVD so uh, I, I have fond memories of the Beat Generation and, and in London over the period when Michael McClure's play The Beard was at the Royal Court Theatre I met for the first time William Burroughs I met him at Compendium Book Bookshop in Camden Town, London where, when he was doing a signing and he signed a copy of the Yagi Letters for me so uh, I, I have great love and admiration and I think they're wonderful examples to all of us of great artists who uh, livened up the last century. And I'll tell you more about the Beat Generation uh, another time. And thank you for listening to episode two of Counterculture. The psychological rubble of America out of the bowels of this bustling, hustling city emerged the angel-headed hipsters ushering in what Norman Mailer later called the first wind of a second revolution in the century moving not forward towards action and more rational, equitable distribution but backward towards being and the secrets of human energy towards a spontaneous mind